In this video we will explore in what ways capitalism destroys democracy and why the phrase capitalist democracy does not make any sense. Capitalism and democracy are actually incompatible. They are opposites. They contradict and undermine each other. So how come capitalism and democracy are opposites and incompatible? Well this is very simple to demonstrate. The whole idea of democracy is that ordinary people should have meaningful influence on how society is managed. In every society decisions have to be made that impact everyone. Healthcare, education, the kind of taxation system, how to treat those who are too sick to work. These are all questions society has to answer. Now you could give the decision making power to a small group of people, or even a single individual. But this concentration of power in a few is dangerous, because they will be tempted to use this power to benefit themselves and not society as a whole. The solution is democracy in which everyone has one vote and we all participate in a meaningful sense in the way decisions are made. Then there is capitalism, which has many meanings, but there is one underlying principle that defines capitalism best. And this is the way how capitalism organizes the economy. In every capitalist system you'll find an employer-employee relationship. There is a boss, a manager, someone who owns and runs the business. And then there are workers, typically many workers, who obey that what an employer or boss or manager tells them. You can see this most clearly in the dominant capitalist institution, the corporation. Every corporation has a similar structure of power. Power is located in the hands of a few people at the top. They decide. Their orders are then handed down below. At the bottom of the hierarchy where most people find themselves, you simply have to obey. There is no democracy. The top-down command structure of a corporation is actually very similar to the structure of power one finds in dictatorships. For instance in the Soviet Union, an interesting fact that has been pointed out by several political scientists. So there you have it. The way capitalism organizes the economy is based on a top-down hierarchical undemocratic command structure. It is the opposite of democracy. But wait, you may think. Perhaps there is no contradiction here. Because democracy belongs to the political system while capitalism belongs to the economy. So as long as you make this distinction that within capitalist democracies only the political system is democratic while the economy is not, then there is no problem, right? Well, no. There are serious problems with this idea, one that has been pointed out a very long time ago. Meaningful political democracy cannot exist in a capitalist system for very simple reasons. When you think of the economy as a system of money, and when you know that capitalism gives power over the economy to a small group of people, you will quickly realize that those who have power over a system of money will use that power to enrich themselves. This then is exactly what you find. In every capitalist system there is tremendous inequality, with those who control and own the corporations having a lot of money, and those who simply work there as powerless employees have much less. And here is the root of the problem. Already thousands of years ago the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle pointed out that in every society with massive inequality you cannot have meaningful democracy. Actually Adam Smith, the so-called father of capitalism, made exactly the same point. He said that those who control the economy will use their money and influence to also get control over the political system. They then use this control to make sure politicians implement policies that benefit them instead of the general population. In the process democracy is seriously undermined. Bearing this in mind, it is then perhaps no surprise that this is exactly what you find in the United States. The United States has large levels of inequality and as a consequence its political system is seriously flawed. Political scientist Thomas Ferguson in his investment theory of party politics, has pointed out that the way democracy is undermined in the United States is by having two political parties, the Democrats and Republicans, 
that both do not really represent ordinary people. Instead, they take care of the interests of different sectors of the business community. So when it comes to Hillary Clinton versus Trump, or Obama versus Mitt Romney, these are quite meaningless choices in many ways, because when it comes to the economy, they both represent the rich and well-off, not ordinary people. In such a system, an election is simply an event where rich investors buy the next president. This is confirmed by other research by Martin Gillens and Benjamin Pace, which shows that there is no relationship between what ordinary people want and what politicians do. Only when you look at the very rich, you find a very strong match between what they want and the policies that politicians implement. So even if you accept that democracy is confined to the political system and capitalism is limited to the economy, they still do not go together. Capitalism and democracy are always in conflict and there are three outcomes to solve this contradiction, one of them being the society in which we live. So the first way how to solve this conflict is when you make the economy democratic, which means you have to get rid of the capitalist way of organizing the economy. The second way is when you make the political system undemocratic. In that case, there is no longer any conflict between an undemocratic economy and a democratic political system. And finally, the solution that we have in the West is that you keep the economy undemocratic and you leave intact, at least formally, the democratic institutions in the political system, but you make them meaningless. So in the United States, even though people can vote, their vote has very little meaning. Those who own and control the economy ultimately hold on to political power, as research shows. They may offer you two candidates that both represent big business, and the media might make this seem as a very meaningful choice, but when it comes to the economy, it is not. In Europe, the political parties are more diverse, but there much power is handed over to the European Union, in which real power is located in undemocratic bodies and undemocratic institutions like the European Central Bank. Other ways to undermine democracy are through trade agreements that lock in place specific economic policies, policies that future democratic governments cannot change, making a democratic vote less meaningful. Ultimately, the solution in the West is in a way a facade designed to fool people, to make them believe we live in a democratic society, a society that is supposedly both perfectly democratic and capitalist that there is no contradiction here, and there's no problem that we have to worry about, or one that we should try to solve.